I have reviewed a bunch of Aris boards in my days and uh, they are some of my favorites to review. I really, really love them. But this year, <laughs> um, with this thing, Gigabyte had some fun. It's not only good, it's, um, it's weird good, if that's a thing. Today, we're reviewing the absolutely gorgeous X670 Aorus Elite AX from Gigabyte, a board which is simply redefining what to expect from an entry level and setting new standards for the entire industry. And you will see that I am not overstating here. Fun fact for you, did you know that having a micro will not prevent you from becoming a motherboard tech reviewer? Whew, lucky. Ours is Gigabyte's gaming lineups of, of products and in particular motherboards and the Elite, it's entry level. And year after year, I have witnessed a somewhat lower end motherboard picking up some premium at every new launch. And this X670 variant is like nothing I've seen before. Now, starting with the obvious, the Aorus Elite boasts a very premium eight-layered PCB ATX board conducted by two thick copper plates. I usually see eight PCB layers on more premium motherboards, more expensive motherboards, but slowly I've, I've seen it creeping in in more budget to mid-budget motherboard, which is great news because it brings in a range of fundamental improvements all around the board, such as VRM heat dissipation, PCIe 4 and PCIe 5 signal isolation, and an overall extended lifespan. I mean, I'm very surprised to see it here. I, I would have been more than happy with six PCB layers. So yeah, definitely the very first big fundamental kudos to ours for this. Design-wise, we have a very straightforward and obvious metallic presence. We stay in the darker gray tones ours has favored for the past three years. And I do like the geometric lines crossing through the componentry of our board. But most importantly, there is a feel of cared for engineering and a heavy duty touch, which is rare in entry levels. RGB wise, ours decided to keep it all connector based, five of them, two of which are addressable. A sobriety, I, I do agree with. I mean, if, if you are going to spend money, I'd like it to be spent on features more than on RGB, especially when you're talking about mid budget motherboards. CPU socket twice. The board is working AMD's first LGS socket featuring no less than 1718 low pressure pins and allowing both PCIe 5 and DDR5 RAM to make the debut on AMD powered motherboards. And looking at AMD track record, I think it is safe to say that this CPU socket is going to be around for at least three to four years supporting three to four uh, incoming generation of Ryzen CPU, which is pretty cool. Now VRM wise, now, the Elite shows 1420 amps organized in 12 phases, eight of which provide no less than 1280 amps of CPU centric power. And keep in mind that this board was meant to be an entry level. So obviously ours has decided to make a point out of this VRM because it is totally overkill for the entire Ryzen 7000 CPUs. It is way more than a Ryzen 7000 could ever use. So definitely some power margin for next gen Ryzen CPUs coming in the next few years. Now, cooling wise, there again, ours decided to make a statement and provided this VRM with a premium two stage cooling blocks linked by a copper heat pipe. The main stage shows off an extended roof for a larger radiating surface, the old supported by large thick alloy walls for heat storage. The side block is no less impressive, showing off a bulky piece of condensed alloy, which both provides plenty of heat storage and dissipation ratio. The results are positively shocking. After 75 minutes stress test, both VRM blocks politely stayed around 45 degrees Celsius. Now this is, at this price range, um, the best VRM you can have access to in the industry and deserve the best grade I can give. And obviously it is suited for any kind of processors you will throw at it, but chances are that the limitation of your CPU will be reached much sooner than uh, the VRM. Now, memory wise, our Elite board supports up to 128 gigabyte of DDR5 RAM organized in a double channel configuration, clockable up to a very fast 6.4 gigahertz, a new accepted clock on X670 powered motherboard, 
which will be very attractive to not only gamers, but anyone who's planning to run uh, memory centric tasks such as streamers and content creators. A little side note here, this board uh, will not support DDR4 RAM. Actually, none of the X670 slash E powered motherboard supports DDR4 memory RAM. So just putting it out there, you know. Now, staying in the memory, we have four M.2 solid state drives, one of which is PCIe 5 compliant, allowing data swaps up to 128 gigabit per second on compatible sticks, that is. Now, that is fast, really fast, and so glad to finally see manufacturers dedicating PCIe 5 technology where it should be storage, where you can actually see some real computing day-to-day -day improvement. Our three other sticks are all PCIe 4.0 compliant, meaning that they can all swap up to 64 gigabit per second worth of data. But that also translates in a lot of heat and M.2 solid state drives get very hot very quickly. But luckily enough, ours has provided, again, very premium thermo padded heat shields, which are impressively thick and do a fantastic job at keeping them from thermo throttling at all time. But most importantly, we have a brand new feature on this motherboard. I love when I spot new features on new motherboards. Ours has implemented their own version of the M.2 solid state drive's cruelest mechanism, ASUS, as introduced 18 months ago, and a feature I absolutely love. It is a bit different, but definitely more premium and sturdier than what MSI came up with. The Elite really takes M.2 solid state drive to another level. We have an accumulated 320 gigabit per second worth of bandwidth, which really puts the bar really high in terms of competitive edge. Now, SATA-wise, we do have still and always our four Jurassic Era SATA 3, which will do a great job at supporting all your legacy drives, but are starting to fade away since we did have six of them on the previous iteration of this board. Now, export-wise, we do have three 16 slots exports with different speeds. As usual, our fastest is the closest to the CPU and provides 16 PCIe 4 lanes, swapping data up to a whooping 32 gigabyte per second. Therefore, this is where you want to place your GPU for optimal performances hence the metallic reinforcement. The two other 16 slots are also running at different speeds and standards. One running four lanes at a fast PCIe 4 standard for a total of eight gigabyte per second, meaning that it could potentially run a second GPU quite decently. But the third one is only running two lanes at a very slow PCIe 3 standard for a tiny two gigabyte per second worth of bandwidth, obvious consequence of the Elite massive M.2 solid state drive configuration. And clearly this thing will not be of much use other than maybe uh, with a capture card. Overall, I really do like the fact that we have an PCIe for only GPU slot, which is more adequate to the current market need, since we will not have PCIe 5.0 enabled video cards for at least two to four years. So that, that's absolutely perfect. But most importantly, we have yet another first, I think, another new feature on this motherboard, which I find incredibly useful. The GPU slot release tab entertains a much larger press plate, which will ease your GPU removal adventures and a rather funny and inexpensive answer to the more complex and intricate ASUS Q slot unlocking mechanism they introduced last year. Well done, ours. Well done indeed. Now, chipset wise, obviously the big change of this season. We have a dual 7 watts chip which aggregate to our X670 chipset. An obvious effort by AMD to keep heat footprint down and avoid the active cooling solutions we saw on the infamously 11 watts hot X570 chipset. Instead, we now have a rather large and thick gridded heat shield which does an okay job in providing some heat relief to the chipset. They are still hotter than what I would like them to be, 55 degrees Celsius being a rather hot average in my opinion. Some improvements might be required on that side of the board in the variants to come. Feature-wise though, there are very little to differentiate the X670 to the X570. They seem to have the exact same PCIe bandwidth output. The only difference noticeable is a better USB support than the X670. 670 chipset brings. Now, back IO-wise. First, let me note our rather premium back IO, always a plus, 
and starting from the left, we have a flashback button, great for CPU-less BIOS upgrade, our dual-band Wi-Fi 6E adapter, able to transfer in that cleaner and much faster 6 GHz spectrum, an HDMI output for our integrated graphics, which is now available on every Ryzen 7000 series processors, four USB second generation plugs. Why? I don't know but it's there. Two USB 3.2 second generation plugs going at 10 gigabit per second each. Six USB 3.2 first generation going at five gigabit per second. A 20 gigabit type C USB plug, which I am rather happy to see here. A surge protected Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN. And finally, our rather acceptable 0897 Realtek codec filtered by a healthy 400 microfarads worth of capacitor. Now it's an okay um, uh, codec, not the greatest in the world, uh, much better in recording than in playback, which is good news, especially for the streamers out there. Overall, it's a rather good uh, um, back IO, very well equipped. I just wonder why we have four USB second generation plugs. Two would have been enough. I would have rather have an extra 10 gigabit plug. I think two is a little bit on the short side, but now I'm just splitting here. Now, front panel connector-wise, we have our usual two USB second generation connectors, great for monitoring, two five gigabit type A front panel connector, and here it gets serious. We have a 20 gigabit type C, that's heavy, and a Thunderbolt four card connector allowing up to 40 gigabit per second transfer rates. Great for content creator. And usually I don't stop here. I just I just go ahead to the next section of the review, but there's so much more bandwidth output on the front panel connector that needs to be really underlined and notice again great for content creators youtubers etc i mean this board really should be noticed for that as well now cooling wise we have five hybrid fan connectors which you know when people say only five so is it on the short side well not really because these are hybrid fan connectors meaning that they can all individually support either a pwm fan a water pump or a flow sensor so basically it can entertain any kind of cooling solutions going to the very classic air, uh, to the more eccentric dual loop custom water cooling system. So again, I'm not gonna go for hours on this. I really think this is suitable for everybody and, and yeah, love it. Now troubleshooting wise, again, we have some surprises here. We have our usual easy debugger, great for a first aid guidance and troubleshooting, but most noticeably, we have three soldered buttons, power, reset, and clear CMOS, which is usually absent in entry levels and which will simplify your life in your troubleshooting experience. Very well done here, very well done indeed. Now, in conclusion, the Gigabyte X670 hours Elite AX launches at $290 before taxes, which is giving the competition very well priced. Now, let me be clear, because it has to be clear. This motherboard is a completely different animal from its past iteration. The engineering care and how to say the premium features who's been introduced as standard in this motherboard is just outstanding. I mean, usually elites are a bit lighter in terms of features and power delivery, but this thing is premium everywhere you look. The VRM will overrun any processors now and to come. The entire board cooling components are beyond reproach, especially the VRM one. PCIe 5 and 4 allocation is precisely what I would want it to be. And most importantly, the eight PCB layers mean that this board is going to last forever. And as in all X670 boards, prices went up here as well. But this is the first one uh, so far, I have reviewed where I can precisely find in its features and making dollar to dollar, dime to dime, where the money went. And it is so absolutely good at everything it does. Uh, to the point I am actually worried for the pro version and even beyond that, because I don't know what they're gonna bring more than the Elite, but that remarks also apply to the Elite competition. Because what the X670 Elite did here is to throw a big fat rock in the pound and they should all be paying notice. So yeah, yeah in a nutshell, if you're looking for the best motherboard at the very best price, I'm not even gonna say mid-budget board. If you're looking for the best gaming motherboard a X670 power chipset can give, there is nowhere else, nowhere else you money wants to be. That's pretty definite.